Hi folks, Thomas Sinson here with thomasinson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's question comes in from a user and it's all about how do I go from a DevOps systems engineer into big data, becoming a data engineer, and some really some career tips around how to focus your job search and maybe not get pigeonholed by recruiters. So find out how I tackle this question right after this. So today's question comes in from YouTube. So a YouTube uh, comment. So if you have a question, just know you can ask the question here in the YouTube comments. You can tweet it out on Twitter. So use the hashtag big data, big questions. I will answer your questions there. And then I also have a URL on my website, uh, thomasinson.com forward slash big questions. So submit those questions. I'll try my best to answer them as quick as I can for you and get that out. So today's question, like I said, comes in from YouTube. So in the comment section here, you can see um, Brandon H. He says, I work in the world of DevOps and I've done a good amount of development against database. I want to break into the field of data engineering because I like Hadoop, ETL, parsing data, and etc. But often I'm pigeonholed by recruiters because of my systems engineering background. Well, first off, Brandon, let me say being a DevOps engineer and being involved in that world, that is another very hot, you know, hot IT area where they're hiring a lot. So I'm going to go through a couple thoughts I have about, you know, why you're being pigeonholed and how to kind of break out of that. So first off, I would say don't really worry about being pigeonholed necessarily by recruiters. And it's, it's not that they're being personal. It's not that they're, you know, doing something malicious, right? If you think about it, so most recruiters, they tend to be paid only if the candidate takes and accepts the role and you have to be given that offer, right, by the company too. So for them, and like I said, DevOps really, really hot right now. You know, there's not enough people in DevOps that are, you know, able to be able to fill these roles just like in data engineering. So anytime a recruiter is going to see your resume and it comes by their table, they're probably going to be like, oh, wow, I've got, you know, X amount of DevOps uh, positions that I need to be filled. And so they want to, you know, kind of kind of push you there. And so what you need to do is you just need to take a step back and you know have a conversation with them about what your career goals are because it doesn't do them any good to put you in those positions to be able to take those roles and then for you to turn them down. You've you know you've taken time away from them where they could have been pushing another candidate and you know that's not gonna it's not gonna end well for them. They're not gonna be able to get paid and then the company's still gonna be looking for a person to and you know you're still gonna be out there too. So if you're looking for something, find a recruiter when you're talking to them. You know be upfront, tell them what you're looking for. And then, you know, kind of work through that there. And, you know, for, for people that don't have the time or maybe they don't have the positions um, available as a recruiter, then that's okay. Just, you know, be nice and cordial and go on and find somebody that's going to take that time and invest it with you. The next thing you can do while you're working on that is you can focus your resume and your social media profile. So, you know, if your LinkedIn profile, especially, you know, if you're in the job search world, you should be using LinkedIn. That's, that, that's just a fact in my opinion. Um, you you really need to focus and you said that you have some um, data analytics experience with databases and some other pieces. I would really focus on those and make sure that those are being highlighted, you know, at the top of your resume, you know, in your cover letter, however you're approaching this, whenever you're talking to recruiters, but also um, your LinkedIn profile too. So with your LinkedIn profile, make sure that you're highlighting those areas that you're looking into and, you know, even, even start pushing out some different, um, you know, start tweeting, you know, if you're on Twitter, but if you're on LinkedIn, start, finding some articles. So go out and, you know, find some articles that are around data analytics that you've read and, you know, you've commented on or, you know, you're excited about and start pushing those and promoting those out too. And that'll kind of get it, you know, get it, get it stirred. And then it'll also give you the education about what's going on in the world of Hadoop and big data. And people will start to see you in that light and they can see, hey, you know, you're really, you know, you're really active in, you know, talking about some of the news and blog posts and, and things that are going on. And so that that's one thing that you, that you should be doing. Um, also, I want to say that I would highlight some of your systems engineering experience too. So in the world of Hadoop, we need, you know, people, data engineers come from different walks. I will say in my role, I'm a systems engineer. So I've been, an, I've been a systems engineer for a while. And so there's a lot of pieces to what you do as a systems engineer that we need in the Hadoop world, especially when you start looking at the Hadoop administration pieces too. So I think that's a very natural fit that maybe, you know, you're, you're maybe overlooking a little bit there in your experience. <clears throat> Next, uh, so while you're doing all this, that's not going to take a lot of time and that's something that you're going to continue to do. Um, go ahead and join an open source project. So find, you know, find an open source project in the new world. May it be, you know, PIG. You said you like ETL. So look at PIG. 
um, look at Scoop, look at any of the new projects that are out there, Spark, or some of the older projects, you know, get involved in HDFS. And when I say get involved, you're probably looking at like, man, you know, um, maybe you don't have Java experience, which I've answered that question here. So, you know, if, if, if you're worried about Java experience, just kind of throw it out the window. But just thinking, just even if you didn't have any experience at all, the first thing, you can still get involved in the projects. You can, you can just go and you can just sign up to get on the mailing list for the developers, for the users, and just start seeing what people are asking about and what the developers are talking about putting forth. And so that, you know, in, in the coming versions. And that'll just get you kind of involved in there and you can start to see maybe, you know, maybe you start to see some of the people that are involved in those projects and maybe you reach out to them, you know, uh, through the distribution list and ask them for some advice. But it also is gonna help you start, you know, as you see these questions, you're gonna actually find and know the answers to these questions too. And so you didn't, that's a way for you to start helping out too, is you can answer some questions. Maybe you can help out in some documentation if you're, you know, not, not comfortable getting in that technical, you know, getting in that technical role just yet. But over time, that'll, that'll help. So be careful though, right? So don't, don't go out and sign up for every one of them. You know, it's, it, you'll, 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 get, <laughs> you'll get an email box full. I would say pick a couple projects, start looking at those and start getting involved. And then the last thing, um, and I, I should definitely make another video about this, but one of the most important things I think you can do, one of the most important things I've done for my career is, you know, starting, starting a blog, making videos like this, but as you start to learn these things from a technical perspective, start talking about them, you know, start writing a blog, give your thoughts on it, you know, write, you know, do a video, do a, you know, a lot of people have gotten, and one of the ways that I got, you know, involved in, and I learned new things is I, I make these watch me teach, you know, videos or watch me learn videos where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going through and I'm going to try to install a, a new, you know, a new open source project that I haven't used. And I'm, I'm, I want to kind of go through it because what you'll find is, you know, as you're going through the documentation and as you're trying to install that or as you're trying to you know develop some code based on some of these projects you're going to find pieces that aren't going to work just maybe like the um, documentation states or maybe your system setup's a little bit different and those questions you're going to figure out the answers to you're going to troubleshoot other people are going to have those problems too i mean right that's why that's why there's so many videos on youtube um, that are constantly updated that's why there's so many different um, educations that's why that's why i'm a plural site author too is because People, you know, people want to learn um, the techniques and some of these things. And, you know, this time that you spend, you know, hours, you know, digging through and troubleshooting those, I mean, it, it can be solved in a five or 10 minute video sometimes. And so that's, that's why it's so popular. That's one way, you know, to, re to, to get involved and really start to get your confidence. I think if you start working on those, those three things, so, you know, focus your resume on the um, pieces that you already have. So your data engineering experience that you said you have, your systems engineering experience, um, make sure that your LinkedIn profile is starting to reflect some of that. So, you know, don't don't put things on there that you haven't done, but you can start getting involved in some of these. Get involved by joining an open source project and then also, you know, create some content around there. Even create a blog just internally um, on your LinkedIn profile where maybe you're just giving your thoughts from a systems engineer perspective on, you know, where Hadoop's going. And especially with the DevOps experience, you could really do a do a kind of a twist on, you know, what you see in agile development and kind of where you think that, you know, big data should go as far as, you know, that kind of methodology too. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks everyone for joining in today. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment section here below, put them out on Twitter, go to my website. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Uh, big Data, Big Questions. I'm doing some book reviews and we started actually doing some interviews as well. So I will see you next time. Thanks again.